Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm here with one of the OG reality stars, Trishel, of course, from the real world Las Vegas, and now the new challenge. Trishel, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to talk to you because obviously you're one of like the, at least specifically for my generation, like I watched you on the real world Las Vegas and of course fell in love with you back then. But you were sort of one of the first people I remember leaving the the real world and uh, doing other projects outside of MTV. I did. Yeah. Um, after the show, all of us actually moved to Los Angeles and we were kind of like, I mean, living in a city like Vegas, it's constant excitement. So we didn't really want to go to our like respective hometowns and it was kind of boring after that. So we all decided to move to LA and then everyone was kind of pursuing something in the entertainment industry, except for Frank. Right. Um, I remember you being on Punked. Um, with Ashton yeah. Kutcher. Was yeah. there like an opportunity around that time that you were maybe like close to or that you, you know, maybe like an acting opportunity or another gig that you're like, oh man, I, you know, you were so close to. Does that there make sense? was. Okay. So I actually had signed with a, a really good agency in Los Angeles. Like I would say top three agencies and I won't name it, but um, they represented some really good people. And so they were like, okay, like get out of reality. We're just going to do acting. So I was going to acting classes and things like that. So they had a role on, it was like the second American pie. It was like American wedding. And um, it was for me to be like Stifler's girlfriend. So it was like a healthy ish role. And so the director like wanted to meet with me specifically. Well, the night before I went to like saddle ranch and like got wasted, blew up. I mean, I went to the audition, but I didn't even know my lines. I mean, my agent was livid with me. I could have had the part. It was mine. And I think I want to say it was January Jones. It was like somebody like in that genre that had, that got the part and ended up doing well after that. Uh, I wish I could have seen you in the American Pie movies, Trishel. I know. Um, <laughs> so you guys went back to the real world. Uh, the Vegas cast, I think you, in 2007, you guys did a reunion season. Yeah, yeah. A and now, of course, with Paramount Plus, they're doing the original real world uh, reunion season. Would you guys come back and do another one? Absolutely. I would. Um, I talked to a couple of the cast members just to see like what they would think about it. And, you know, I, who I've talked to, they said they would do it. I think whenever we did the first reunion, it was just too soon. Like we were all still figuring out life. Like, you know, the only person who really had changed a lot, I felt like was Bryn. And, you know, she had kids and she had gotten married. Everyone else was kind of still living in apartments with like barely any furniture. Right. <laughs> Right. So now our lives are completely different. So it would be something to see. I want to see you guys. I want to see all the cast reunite. I love seeing all of the the people that I grew up with on screen. And the uh, the original cast that's been rebooted, I think it's truly an amazing show. Like they're having these really interesting conversations. And uh, I find it very fascinating. So I hope that you guys do. Has there been any talk like officially? Has anyone from MTV reached out and said like, we're going to do Vegas next. Cause I feel like they're going to no. be doing some other ones. They have no, no one has reached out to us. Um, but I do think that there are some older seasons. I think that would, that I think they should do before us. Um, I would love to see San Francisco. It's like one right. of my favorite seasons. Um, and, uh, yeah. And best season, the one in LA, like that was a good one. Uh, I saw online Amaya from Hawaii said they approached her about doing, um, a reunion. I would love to see. Hawaii was the first one for me that I really remember getting into. Yeah. Um, I mean, tech, tech and Ruthie jumping naked in the pool is like forever. Just one of the most iconic moments in reality TV. Right. right. You mentioned Beth. Now the, this new season of challenge all star is like, Trishel, I'm not even bullshitting you. Like I felt like I had just taken like a long drag of a cigarette. Like I was so happy watching it. <laughs> <laughs> It just felt so satisfying to see all yeah. you guys. And I kind of thought that I thought it would be like a really easy challenge season, but it seems no. like they were hard. Was that a surprise to you guys? Uh, to me personally, Danny, I, <laughs> I thought that I was going to go there and that we were going to walk in the house and they would have like a cheese board and caviar and like giving us like a bartender that gave us like martinis and whatever. I did not expect to break a sweat. The first challenge was so 
hard, physically just exhausting that I was afraid. I mean, whenever TJ comes in and he's just like, this is a real challenge. I was like, whatever. Like he's, he always says that they're going to make it look good for TV. No, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Oh my God. Uh, the last season you had been on prior to this one, I think was 2013 and you had left. And I think you said that CT made you feel unsafe. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, and I feel bad. I don't want to say that CT made me feel unsafe, like in that way, like personally, there was a fight in the kitchen and he was fighting with someone and he pushed someone and I was like making eggs and like burn myself with grease. And it was just like close quarters for people. These guys are huge. And for them to be fighting around girls like that, I just didn't feel like there was enough like bodyguards or whatever around. Like it just felt unsafe. Uh, how do you think the show has evolved? I mean, now it is totally different. And now they have people from all sorts of different shows. I still enjoy it, but I, my heart is with like the OGs. Um, how do you think it has evolved over the years? I don't watch the new challenges because I just can't get into like the, the people coming from other shows and maybe I'm just a snob and oh, fine. I am. Okay. But like, I like our season. I know the casting process that we went through and how grueling that was. And it took them months of conversations with me and interviews and everything. And then they go and they use these people from big brother. I love big brother, but I want them to stay on big brother. I don't want them on our challenge. Right. <laughs> Uh, who were you most excited to see and who are you like most nervous to see in the uh, new season? Oh, oof. I was most excited to see people. Well, Arissa, because like I completely love her from my show and she, I just wanted to see her and give her a big hug. Um, I was excited to meet tech because I'd never met him. And he's just like, to me, larger than life. I was extremely nervous to see Anissa, like so nervous, Danny, that I was spiraling during quarantine, like spiraling. I, I was so freaking out because whenever I did rivals, Anissa and I left on a very bad note. Um, I had said something that was racially insensitive and, you know, I had since apologized to her personally, but I wanted to like do it face to face. And she's like a big, she's a big personality to me. She's very intimidating. And I was afraid that I wouldn't have the right words. And, uh, you know, I don't know if they're going to show it, but I hope they do. Do you feel good about it though? Yeah. How you guys left it? Yeah. I do. I feel like I was able to like tell her, you know, apologize to her. And I felt like she, she accepted it and felt like it was genuine. So that, that was good. But, um, I felt nasty about the, the situation for the past nine years. Yeah. Uh, I was so excited to see Alton and Arissa too. Alton was one of my first like sexual awakenings. I'd say like, I always thought he was like one of the best looking real worlders. He's and so hot. He looks the same. Exactly. I know. I, yeah. He's, he's gorgeous. Um, but do you still keep in touch with all of the Vegas people? I talked to Steven like, a week and a half ago. Um, we I talked took one of his workout classes too, by the way, before quarantine. Really? He, yeah, he teaches like right down the street from where I live. But, wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, It was so wild. Good. I just I, I just sort of like <laughs> happened into a class with my friend and it was Steven teaching. I'm like, what the, what's going on? <laughs> I would have died. Um, yeah, no, he, I still talk to him. Um, I text with like Brennan, Irulan, um, Arissa. I talk to him on the phone all the time. Uh, Frank, every once in a while, I talk to his wife more than him. Alston, he, he's always been kind of a loner and hard to get in touch with off camera, but like, you know, on the challenge that we just did, we were fine. Like it was good to see him. I felt, you know, nice to have him there. How are Arissa and Erilon? Like, are they still close? Cause I worry about oh, that. Oh yeah. Okay, no, good. they're so okay, close. Yes. We were supposed to have like a, a like a group zoom call, um, that we're hopefully going to do soon. Right. Uh, was there anyone that didn't come back that you would have really hoped to come back or maybe some people that you can spoil? I, I'm sure they approach people that either couldn't do it for various reasons. Yeah. Um, so I think. I, yeah. Like who? Tell so me. many people. OK, so Coral. I oh, love Coral. She too. is. She has the best clap back. She has the best interviews. She has made fun of me so many times. And I always thought it was hilarious because like, she's so good at it. Um, but I love her. Uh, Adam Larson from road rules. I'm just personal friends with him and I love him. Danny Roberts from new Orleans, even though we've had oh. a little bit of beef. Um, he is like the hottest person in the entire world. I saw that you posted something about that. I love um, him. I love Danny. So cute. Um, yeah, he's so hot. Um, 
That Seeing so his, nice. I remember like watching, I, I mean, I love that Paramount Plus is doing all of this throwback stuff because so much of it was, was so important in retrospect. Like I think about that Danny season in New Orleans with mm-hmm. the, when his boyfriend came and they had to blur out his face. And yeah. it's like, I just think MTV and the, and the real world specifically gave, it had conversations that no one was having on television at the time. And, and even I, I think the Vegas season, your season was really a turning point for the show, but still, I think that looking back and I had watched some of the episodes I was rewatching your season and it's like, it's still so different than anything that's on TV now. And I, I miss that. I miss that. I do too. Um, and look, I love shows like the Kardashians and I love the housewives, obviously. And that's all fun, but it's just like the fact that we really bond living together. Like my roommates are like my family and I still feel that way, even though it was in almost 20 years ago. Oh my God. I can't even think about that. Well, I still feel like if I called Irulan and I was crying and I needed her, she would be there. And I feel comfortable doing that. Like if I'm in New York and I'm like, Hey, I need a place to sleep. I'm going to go to her house and feel fine and not even have to make my bed the next morning. We're right. family. Right. Uh, so would you come back for another all-star season? Do you leave this one? Uh, you can't tell me that, but <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would come back for another one, Danny. I, I I think that I'm like not really there anymore. Like I need my phone. Like I want to have cocktails when I want to have cocktails. Like this was the first challenge though, that I did where they didn't production and didn't have to like physically take drinks out of people's hands the di- the night before the challenge. And I think it's just because we're all a little bit older on this one that we knew that we might die if we had to perform with a hangover. Yeah. 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 Uh, I want to ask about a couple other things you did back in the early aughts that I just are near and dear to my heart. So I mentioned punked uh, with Ashton Kutcher. Do you remember what, what do you remember most about that experience? <laughs> uh, it's on YouTube, lot. by the way. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Wait, you said a lot. Like what, give me, what, what do you mean a lot? Oh, no, I was just Ashton. Uh, he's, he's adorable. I had a crush on him like forever when I was like doing my show and I was so surprised. They had asked me to go to the MTV studios in Santa Monica. And I was like, um, they had like the security, which they normally did have some sort of security outside. So I wasn't shocked. And then I was going through the security and it kept on buzzing. And I was like, what in the hell is going on? And I was wearing this tiny skirt in the middle of the day and for people watching they were like oh of course she's wearing that what a whore and I'm like okay first off like I was going to do like a hosting interview that's what I thought I was doing and then secondly I was going to Hugh Hefner's birthday that night so like I had to look kind of you know sexy so anyway um yeah that was really fun I was completely shocked when I saw Ashton I was like oh my god I was like, I did punk. Ash, I met Ashton Kutcher. I have made it. Like, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> everybody go home. <laughs> you know, do you look back on that time? There's a documentary called Framing Britney Spears on Hulu that was very yeah. fascinating. And I think culturally, we're all sort of looking back on that time and seeing how the media treated women. And, and specifically, I do think that you were uh, at the receiving end of a lot of that misogyny and, and, um, yeah. How do you feel about that now? Are are you, yeah, how do you feel about that now? It was really difficult. And it's weird because like you said, that that time I had gotten so much hate. And I think it was because there wasn't so much reality TV out there that everything that I had done on camera was completely shocking to people. Like they had never seen like a girl on girl kiss on camera. And they had never seen like, you know, like the three-way kiss and like me dating Steven and, you know, everything. But I'm so grateful that there was no Twitter back then. There was no like little social media. However, they had MTV message boards. People had found like my family's phone number. They were calling my grandmother and grandfather saying that I was a slut and a whore and all this other stuff, calling my dad's business line. Like it was just awful. So um, I think now it wouldn't have been as shocking, but back then it was really hard. People told me all the time, you know, kill yourself. You're ugly. You're fat. You needed this. Like you're a whore, Uh, all the horrible, horrible things. And I know people get that now, but it's not okay. It's never okay. Right. Right. And I don't know that people realize how, how emotionally taxing it'd be to even get one message like that, let alone a, a slew of them. Um, yeah. Okay. The surreal life you did. The, who did you do the surreal life with? I can't remember. Uh, Ron Jeremy, that 
did not age well. Um, <laughs> uh, Tammy Faye, who is now passed away, Eric Estrada, Tracy Bingham, Vanilla Ice. And I think that's it. I think what a crew. What, what do you, yeah. what, what like sticks out to you about that experience? Anything? Uh, oh, Tammy, she was just the sweetest woman you've ever met. I mean, and Tammy is like, she's this Christian woman who is just so like larger than life, but she's also like this gay icon. She was just like completely sh- a contradiction, you know? And so I just love that about her. She's the sweetest. Um, I remember she started crying whenever we went to the nude, the nude place, or it was like a, I don't know, it, it, someone came out from behind a desk and everything was showing and she started crying. I felt so bad for her, but um, I'm the only one who got topless at the nude resort course. Shocker. <laughs> uh, who around that time were you most excited to meet? Like, was there a celebrity? I'm sure. Did you guys go to like the VMAs and stuff back then? Oh yeah. yeah. We, did, we did the VMAs. We did the movie awards. We did all kinds of stuff. Um, like, who sticks out as like, Oh my God, I, it was so exciting to meet them. I remember one time, um, let's see, we had like, whenever we lived in Vegas, we had a lot of celebrities that came up to our suite because, you know, they were like in the palms or whatever, and they just never signed releases and wouldn't be on camera, but production like left them there like for like who? a second. Vince Vaughn, uh, came, uh, Tyra, uh, wait, not, was it Tyra? Was it Tyra? No, it wasn't Tyro. Somebody else. Um, I don't know. There's like athletes that came up there. Um, a couple band members, like some of the guys from 311 that I I used to love. Um, yeah, just so many people. Did you meet Adrian Malouf around that time? I, I in in I my did. rewatch, I haven't seen her yet, but I'm expecting her. Maybe she pops up or something. What was she Adrian does, like? She doesn't pop up on the show, but I did meet her, and I'm telling you, she was the kindest person, so down to earth. And literally, she told me she was like, "If you ever do anything red carpet, you can come to my closet in LA and like pick out a dress." She was so nice to me. You know, I imagine you probably got hit on by a lot of celebrity men back in the day. Was there, did you ever like date anyone famous? <laughs> I feel like you must have, right? I think dating is a very loose term. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've hooked up with a couple famous people. Yeah. Anyone, anyone you could share with me? I don't want to kiss and tell, but yes, there's, there, there's some, a couple big ones, I would say. Yeah. Oh, a couple big ones. Yeah. Now I really want to know the names. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, what uh, can you tell me about uh, coming up on this season of the challenge? Again, I, I hope everyone wow. listening just goes and watches it. I, I'm not joking. I, I felt like I was exhaling a cigarette or something. It was so good to see all you guys. I was just happy to like even just check out how everyone looked and then also to hear about what they've been up to. It was yeah. so gratifying to me. But so what do we have to look forward to? Okay, so. One thing I was shocked by, and it's insane that I I am shocked by this and I was part of it, uh, is all the drama. Like, there were hookups. I mean, I'm sure people were probably like, oh, all these old people, like, they're married, whatever. Like, they're not going to be hooking up. Nope, there were hookups on the challenge. There were fights. I may or may not have been involved in a few. (laughs) Um, And I remember TJ said, whenever we first got there, he was like, maybe your past will come back to haunt you. And I was like, oh, God, he's so dramatic. Like, well, my past came back to haunt me several times while I was there. I was and it it was just kind of crazy. I mean, you're fighting with these people that you care about and love, but you have like so much history with. Um, I did not expect that to happen. Uh, But then there's also great moments like we had this throwback 90s party where everyone dressed up in the 90s and we all danced. And it was one of the best, most fun nights of my life. Um, So, yeah, there's like a lot of tears, but also a lot of good times too. I can't wait for more. Um, Trisha, you mentioned you like the, uh, the housewives. What had you watch all the housewives? Like, where do you stand? Uh, right now I'm just starting New Jersey, but like, I, I have always watched OC in New York. Those are like my favorites. Who's your favorite housewife? My those. favorite housewife, I want to say Leah, because I feel like I identify with her like the most. She's just like, doesn't give a shit. She's just like, don't afraid to be a bitch. And like, I feel that way about me. <laughs> um, I love her, but I, I think Ramona, actually, she is very fascinating to watch. Yeah. Would you ever do a housewives? I mean, I know they're, you're in Louisiana, correct? I'm in New Orleans. New Orleans. Yes. Yeah. Would you ever do, let's say they come to New Orleans, which mm-hmm. I think they should. I think that would be a great city. It really would be. Yeah, would you uh, do I I would actually love to do a Housewives because I just think I'm more fitted for that type of show 
than like a challenge. Like I'm a little bougie. Like I didn't want to get my hair wet. Like I didn't want (laughs) to, there's just, I don't know. I'm more like have a cocktail by the pool type of person, not like climb a mountain. I was laughing so hard in the first episode, like you guys were uh, swimming out to sea to get those big ass blocks. And some, some of the people would just like get a couple feet out and be like, you know, it's not going to work for me. And I'm just going to take the penalty. (laughs) That would have been me too. (laughs) It's hard. And I hate cold water. Like I was literally saying that I was like, there's just nothing worse than cold water. And that was the first challenge. (laughs) Michelle, we need to get you on another show. Like I don't, I need you on my TV at all times. Like (laughs) that's so sweet. Like let's figure it out. I don't know what the MTV figured out. New Orleans is a great place to film too. I mean, they did the Southern charm here. I don't know if it's coming back for a third season, but like, I think New Orleans is the most fun place ever. It is not nonstop. And the bars don't close here. People are getting crazy all the time. Like I'm like a professional boozy bruncher. Like that's what I do. So I need it immediately. Like <laughs> guy, we, the MTV should do for Paramount plus like the, almost like a housewives ripoff or something. It, yeah. it could be, you know, I, that would be fun. Um, Trishelle, I'm going to let you go. But before I do, I ask all my guests uh, these two questions. Your favorite Mariah Carey song. And if you were choosing for People Magazine, Sexiest Man Alive, who would you choose? Oof, that's hard. Okay. Mariah Carey. Uh, I am so basic. It's always going to be all I want for Christmas. Like it, I play it on repeat. Sometimes when it's not even Christmas, I play it. Um, and Sexiest Man Alive. Oh, wow. That's tough. Um Oh God, who's the guy from Bridgerton? Like the main guy. Oh my God, so hot, right? Yeah, well, I, know. I don't know. I can't, his Renee, name. I think it's like Renee. I, I, um, I can't I, pronounce his name. He's gorgeous. He's, he's gorgeous. so sexy. I would have to say him. He's really hot. Um, Trishel, this was so fun. Anything else you want to tell listeners before I let you go, or where they can find you on social media and all that good stuff? Yeah, um, Instagram at Trishel C. Um, I post a little bit. I, you know, sometimes I'll like say funny comments about like housewives or whatever on Instagram. I just kind of like to talk shit, whatever. Um, and on Twitter at Trishel C as well. And um, just everybody watch the challenge on April 1st on Paramount Plus. It's going to be so amazing. It's not going to be what you expect. It's actually more dramatic, what I've heard, than the newer channel. Challenges. So, yeah. You know, the newer challenges are good, but th- they sort of lack, I think, the interpersonal dynamics of the show. Back in the day, it used to be a little bit more focused on the the relationships. And so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. Also on Twitter, I have to say, I love when you and Chriselle were going back and forth. I need, oh. I think I said on Twitter, I need like a show, Chriselle and Chriselle, you know. <laughs> do something. She's wonderful. I love her. I think she's so beautiful. And she's like, just spot on with like what she tweets and what she believes in. And I really like that about her. I think she's wonderful. But I wanted to tell you one comment, what you were just talking about. I think that with the newer show with the newer challenge cast members, a lot of them are cast just because of like, kind of athleticism and like how they're going to do like with a challenge. But for, for us, I think that, and this is going to sound arrogant, but I don't care. We were cast based on our personality because when you're on the real world, you don't have anything else going on. You're not voting people off. You're not, you know, it's, it's just, be, it's just you, you're right. making a show. And so that's the kind of people that are on this new all-stars challenge. These are people that all have a specific star quality personality. And that's why I think it's going to be a fun show to watch. And I'm sorry, there's no one on the new season. Seasons that's as good TV as Beth. Like the, it just doesn't. It's <gasps> not possible. Great. Like oh she, my god, yeah, she's amazing. Like she's, I, or you or I mean, so many of these people. It's like we need that in Beth reality. Really, TV. she's very interesting because she lives up to the villain persona, but she wants to be liked. Like it's just very. It's she's a very interesting person. I think and looks amazing too. I was saw she her. Does. I was like, you look so good. I mean, we haven't seen you in 15 years or something. And it's like, she's still, she looks better than ever. She does look better than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Trishelle, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank I'm so happy did. we finally got to do this and Me I'll, too. um, I look forward to watching the rest of this season. All right, baby. Bye.